We're getting some details, uh, and this courtesy of the New York Times, of what's in uh, the president's budget right now, the six trillion dollar budget. But this is one that goes out a number of years. Right now, the, the White House is looking at strong GDP growth in 2021 and 2022. Now, remember, the year ago comparisons are such that that's why you're going to get strong growth. For example, in the second quarter, um, they're looking at something in the vicinity of a 10 percent uptick GDP growth year over year. Obviously, it slows as you get to comparisons kind of like we have now. But they are looking at it falling to about 2% in 2023 to around 1.8% a year through the mid 2020 So they're not really uh, forecasting any great shakes growth going forward. What's interesting as well, uh, as they are looking at, and this is uh, from numbers that have been well telegraphed, uh, deficits as far as the eye can see, at least for the next decade or so, averaging at least $1.3 trillion deficits each year, every year, for at least the next six to seven years, likely 10 years. And here's the number that stuck out in my head, that the overall debt level will eclipse 117 percent of GDP uh, by the year 2031, as things stand now. Now, that might sound like some gobbledygook. Let me explain it to you, though. It, it, it would sort of be like you looking at your financial worth, your assets and your liabilities, if you own a home, but you owe more on your home than it's worth, that your debt, your obligations are greater than all your assets, that you're in the red. We as a country are in the red. We are deep in the red. Everything we have and produce as a country dwarfed by what we owe in this country. We owe a fortune to ourselves. And we are global deadbeats as a result. The fear that builds on this, if it ever registers at the corner of wall and broad, is eventually people might think twice about investing in you if they think that you are getting to be more of a deadbeat.